Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Amen. I always got to remember to turn off my uh, auto lock, man. Glory to God. Um, I want to share a couple thoughts. The Lord stirred me this weekend. Um, and just basically, I had heard this before. But um, I kind of felt led this morning to share along these lines, and it's powerful. Somebody say powerful. powerful. Amen. How many believe the Lord could speak to you over the next couple of minutes and just I mean, really, I, hate, I don't want to be, you know, exaggerate, speak over exaggerate by any means, but this is a true statement. How many believe that God right now over the next few moments can speak something to you that will change your life? Amen. And that's that's the message that the Lord gave me this morning was one word from God. Somebody say one word. one word. One word from God can change your entire life. Amen. Somebody say one word. I'm going to give you a couple examples here from the scriptures. One thing, just one word from God. People sit in church for 50 years and never receive a word or a word of faith that they can build their life on. But it, it doesn't take a, theolog uh, a, a theological degree. It just All you need is one word. And you know, most of the stories in the Bible is God working with just regular people. Uh, you don't see, you know, God, they had to go to a theological seminary or Bible school or ministry training. Now they just got a word. Let's make this thing really simple. All you need is one word from God. One word from God can change everything about your life. Amen. Somebody say one word. Okay, let's look at a couple examples. First one in P, uh, Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, uh, starting in verse 1. This is a story about uh, Cornelius, who I actually have uh, a fondness for because it says uh, he, uh, look down here, Cornelius lived a, a Roman uh, army officer named Cornelius, who was a captain of the Italian regiment. Is anybody here? Italian. See, that's, I'm half Italian. Well, actually, a quarter, but that's the best 25% of me is the Italian part, right? But uh, Cornelius, uh, who was a captain of the Italian regiment, um, he was a devout, uh, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. Uh, one afternoon, verse 3, about 3 o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said... Cornelius stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. The angel replied, your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Verse 5. Now send, this is a word from God right here. This is a word, everybody say a word from God. This is a word from God. He didn't say, Cornelius, you need to go to theological seminary. Cor Cornelius, you need to go to church for 20 years until you learn something. Cornelius, you need to get up and go to Sunday school uh, you know, go for a few years so you can get a good foundation so you know what you're talking about. No, all he said was, this is a word from God delivered through an angel to a, an actual man. And he said, send uh, some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. That's it. That's the word that God gave him through the angel. Now, we look on down to verse uh, 44. And this is obviously a whole lot happened in the verses in between. But verse 44 says, uh, obviously Peter came. There's a lot of supernatural things that happened. Peter came to uh, uh, Cornelius' house and began to share the message of Christ with them. In verse 44, as Peter was saying these things, preaching the message of the gospel to them, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening. This is in Cornelius' house. Peter is speaking the word of God to them. The Holy Spirit fell on all those that were in Cornelius' house. Verse 45, the Jewish believers uh, who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out. Now, look at this key word here, Gentiles. Everybody say Gentiles. Had been poured out on the Gentiles too. Verse 46, for they heard them uh, speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? Verse 48, so he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. Somebody say one word. One word. Cornelius had one word 
from God, delivered through an angel, and it said, send to get Simon Peter and have him come to your house. That's all he had. But you know, there's a lot of details in this story. Number one, Cornelius and his entire family were absolutely changed that day. Somebody say changed. They, they were changed. Not only were they born again, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's an interesting theological point. This was the opening of the gospel to what we call, and what the Bible calls Gentiles. Everybody say Gentiles. What's Gentiles? It's anybody outside of the Jewish uh, people. It's, it's you and I. It's you and I, right? It's the non-Jews. The Jews had the gospel first. One word to one man changed the entire world. Is anybody here? Somebody say one word. All right, let's look at another example quickly. Uh, let's look at the story of Elisha, Elisha and a man named Naaman. Quickly, I'm only giving you a couple verses from each of these stories. Everybody say, I'm listening. You better be. Second Kings, uh, Second Kings chapter 5, starting in verse 9. Naaman, everybody say Naaman. Naaman was, uh, had a, was diagnosed or had a serious condition known as leprosy. Everybody say leprosy. Leprosy is not a good thing, right? I mean, you got all kind of your stuff, your fingers falling off. They got all kind of, had to go to a, almost a separate deal. In the New Testament, they described it as that. This guy's got an issue here. And Naaman, uh, he went with his horses and chariots. He's going to the house of the prophet Elisha. Everybody say Elisha. He's going, uh, he, he said, but Elisha, oh, go back to verse 9. I missed something there. Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house okay verse 10 this is interesting but elisha sent what everybody say a messenger he sent a messenger out what does a messenger do delivers messages right what does a messenger do delivers a message so elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message now the prophet in the old covenant in the old testament they were god's voice they spoke and released the word of god everybody say the word of god Okay, there they uh, he goes to the prophet's house in hopes of getting a word about his condition. Elisha just sends a messenger out and says this, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Now, skipping down a few verses, verse 14, it says, so Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as what? The man of God had instructed him. Somebody say one word. He didn't have to go to Sunday school. He didn't have to go to 8,000 church services. He didn't have to hear the latest series on how to build a better marriage and how to get your finances straight. The only thing uh, Naaman had was one word. Somebody say one word. See, we overcomplicate this thing. When it comes to our faith, we overcomplicate it. We think, I hear it, I hear it from people that come that have not been in church. They say, oh, I need to go to Bible school. Oh, oh I need to go to theological seminary. Oh, I need to sit under this class. Oh, I need to go to this seminar. I need to go to this conference. No, you need one word. Why? One word from God can change your life. Somebody say one word. So it says, he became, uh, did I finish this? Naaman went down to the Jordan River, dipped himself seven times, as the man of God had instructed him. He had a word. Not a book, not a Bible, not a series. He had a word. Amen. And it says, his skin became healthy as the skin of a young child, and he was what? Healed. One word set this man free. One word. Now, now we're not talking about a cold or a flu. He had leprosy. One word set this man free from that disease. One word. And it's interesting. It wasn't even like, it wasn't an angel. It wasn't anything. The prophet didn't even leave his house. He just sent the word through a messenger. And the guy heard the word and he acted on it in faith and he was healed that day. Amen. Somebody say it again. One word. All right. Let's look at another quick example. Uh, oh, some of you might like this one. This is about a, a woman or a, a person, a widow in debt. Somebody say debt. Don't raise your hand or nod your head, but how many of you would love to eliminate some debt? Yeah. <laughs> Says this, 2 Kings chapter 4. See, I love these Old Testament stories and books, uh, especially these 2 Kings, 1 Kings, Samuel. It just shows God working over and over and over again. 
He's just, just God working supernaturally. I mean, he's the same God today that he was then. Yeah. Amen. If he healed Naaman, he can heal you. Yeah. Well, I don't know if God wants to heal me. That's your problem. You, you think wrong. You don't know what God actually wants. Amen. Glory to God. So it says this, uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, one day, uh, one day a widow uh, of a member of the group of the prophets came out to Elisha and cried, cried out, my husband who served you has died and you know uh, how he feared the Lord, but now a creditor has come threatening, uh, this is actually a whole other sermon here threatening to take my two sons. See, back in the day, you, you just didn't throw your credit card away and decide, I'm not going to pay them. No, back then, they'd come and take your children away. Somebody said, I wish they would. <laughs> There's some days I wish they would, right? No, you want them back. But once you miss them for a day or two, then you're like, no, bring them back. No, you got to pay your debt. You know, uh, hold on and let me think about this for a minute. Okay. So they uh, came and threatened to take uh, the two, her two sons away. Verse 2, so... He, she said, what, um, and the prophet said, what can I do to help you? Tell me, the prophet said, what do you have in the house? And she said, nothing at all except a flask of oil, she replied. Verse 3. Elisha said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Verse 4. Then go into your house with your sons shut the, and shut the door behind you. Pour the olive oil from the flask into the jars. Oh my gosh. Setting each one aside when it is full. Glory to God. Somebody say one word. Did this woman have to go to church? Did she go back and uh, get caught up on her back tithes? Did she go light a bunch of candles and pray to every uh, person that she could think of? Did she? No, she just got a word and she acted on it. Right? And verse 5 gives the response, so she did. Somebody say she did. She did as she was told. She had a word from God through the prophet, right? Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. If she would have went to other cities and got as many jars from there as she could, that oil would still be pouring till today. Why? A word from God. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. A word from God actually contains power to produce what it says. See, your doctor can give you a word. Your doctor could tell you something. If you do this, then that'll happen. But he doesn't, he doesn't actually have the power. He or she doesn't have the power to actually guarantee that that word will come to pass. But guess what? God, everything that God says has the power. See, that's the thing with a word from God. God's word has the power within it to actually produce what he said it would produce. So when you get a word from God, you don't have just a word from like you would from someone else. No, you have the word of the living God that actually contains the power within it to produce what he said. Meaning this, another way to say it is, when God gives you a word, you don't have to produce it. You don't have to produce that word. God will produce what he said with his own power. Somebody say one word. So this, this, this woman, it says verse, verse uh, 6 here, soon every container was filled to the brim, and she said to her sons, bring me uh, 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 another jar, and they said there aren't any more. And then what happened? This is the best part of the story here. Then uh, uh, he, the oil stopped flowing. They ran out of jars. The oil stopped flowing. When she told uh, the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now sell the oil and pay your debts. Somebody say debt free. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's supernatural. See, y'all ain't hearing me today. See, you want to just do what you want to do. You want to try to pay debt uh, in your own uh, strength. Or you want to try to receive healing in your own way or through some natural way, which is fine, fine. But when you have a word from God, amen. When you have, is anybody here today? Am I just preaching to myself? I got, I got words, baby. I got words. If I, I ain't standing up here trying to tell you something I don't believe, I have the word of God. I'm not talking about just the Bible. I've got God's word to me just like these individuals had it. Amen. 
I've got God's word to me just like they had it. Amen. Supernatural words. Um, I'm not going to read these stories, but think about uh, Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. Amen. Got a word from God. Amen. Paul had a word from God. Noah had a word from God. Amen. A word. Somebody say a word. A word. That you don't need a Bible degree. You just need a word. Oh, I got about 20% of you on that one. I'm sorry. Am I boring you all? Do you have some pressing engagement that you need to be at? Maybe a pie eating contest? Why don't you stop being so carnal and fleshly and listen to the word before you feed your flesh out there? I'm just teasing. Kind of. All right. Somebody say a word. Now I got, I got, I got two. Let me give you this verse quickly. Then I'm going to, I got one more verse here. Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four. Says this in verse 12 in the New Living Translation. For the word of God. Everybody say the word of God. This is God speaking to you right now. Take it or don't. Take it or don't. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part today. I am not responsible for this coming to pass in your life. You are. You are responsible to hear God's word and actually get it, get it into your heart and let it work for you. Right? Amen? I can't do it all. I can't shuck the corn, plant the corn, reap the corn, water the corn. I mean, somebody else has got to do something at some point. Right? And Laura said, I wish somebody would come along and baby me. I wish somebody somebody come along and coddle me and help me know everything's going to be all right. No, sometimes we got to take that big adult diaper off and we've got to get moving in the things of God. Hello? Meaning if we've heard, we've heard and we're, 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 we're responsible now to act on what God said. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. Oh, man. For the word of God is what? The word of God. Your word? Your neighbor's word, your granny's word, your mama's word, your daddy's word, your, aunt, your auntie's word. No, God's word. Hello, Dr. Phil's word, Oprah's word. Oh, don't be talking about Oprah, Pastor Dan. I have to come up there and cut you if you talk about Oprah. No, I ain't talking about uh, oh, uh, Oprah's word. No, they, they, no, none of their words have power. But God's word, it says here, is what? See, I lost about four people there when I said Oprah. Okay. God's word is what? Alive and what? It's powerful. Look at what the Amplified says here about God's word. Same verse. It says, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Making it what? The word active, operative, energizing, and effective. I'm going to keep reading that little deal. For the word, everybody say the word. For the word, you got to get this in your heart today. For the word that God speaks is what? It's alive. It's alive. Man, when God speaks something, it's alive. Why? Because he's alive. You can read the book, the, the, the teachings of Buddha. You can read the teachings of Muhammad. But they're not alive. They're just words. But this word right here is alive. Somebody said, Pastor Darren, you're going to offend everybody by the end of this message. No, I'm just giving you the truth. The word of God is alive. The word that God speaks is alive. It's what? Full of power. Somebody say full of power. It's full of power. The word that God speaks is full of power. Does anybody need a word? Does anybody have a word? The word that God speaks is, is alive and full of power, making it active. It, it, the, the fact that it's alive and full of power, it makes it active. It's operative, it's energizing, and what? I love this one, effective. Somebody say effective. The word can produce something that no other thing can produce. Man, somebody just from your heart this morning, just say, I, I need a word from God. I, I need a word from God. I'm going to give you one right now, okay? Anybody want a word from God? Last verse, Mark 11. Last verse. I'm going to torture Pastor Frank because he had to go speak somewhere else this morning. I'm going to make this a short message. So the one he didn't hear was short. He loves short messages. You know, the only time he texts me and tells me good messages is when they're short. Uh, it's a true story. 
Mark 11, verse 22. Here's your word from God this morning. Here's your word from God. Jesus just cursed a fig tree 24 hours earlier. The disciples walked by. They say, one of them said, Master, look, the tree that you cursed yesterday is withered up from the roots. And then Jesus said this to them. What, is it, what does he say up here? Jesus answered them. Let, let, me, let me say it again. They were walking to a town. Jesus saw a fig tree. Read it. It's all in there. You read it, read it later if you want. He goes by, sees a fig tree from afar, thought there'd be figs on it. Gets up to the tree. There's no figs. So he was, I don't know what was going on there. He was hungry, something. He was, I don't know, grumpy. Yeah, I agree. And he just went up, something there, and there was no figs on the tree. So he cursed the tree. He cursed the tree. He said, no one eat fruit from you beyond this day. They go on about their business. The tree's still standing there. They come back the very next day, the Bible says. They look at the tree. The tree is withered up from the roots 24 hours later. The tree's dead. Right? So one of his disciples says, Jesus, look, the tree that you cursed yesterday is already dried up from the roots. It's dead. And then Jesus answers and says this. He says, I think it was baby Peter that said, look, master, the tree you cursed is withered. And Jesus said, yes, that's one of my Jedi tricks. Yes, that's one of my uh, son of God tricks. You'll never be able to do this. Yes, yes, Peter. It's because I've been to seminary. I was under the best rabbis. I went to Sunday school, Saturday school, whatever they had back then. And, uh, you know, this is only for me to do. Now, what did he say? None of that. He said, this is how this works, Peter. This is how this works, disciples. He said, what? Have faith in God. Have faith in God. One minister that I believe stood in this very pulpit years ago and said this probably 15 years or more ago. He said, he traveled all over the world preaching in churches. And he made this comment. He said, faith is at an all-time low in the earth. So much so, Jesus even said, when I come back to the earth, will I find faith? Well, he's going to find it here. He's going to find it with me because I believe. I believe when they say the economy is doing this, my faith is not in the economy. My faith is in God. When you get a, a particular medical thing, is my faith only in medical science? No, thank God for medical science and all they're able to do to help us. Amen. Thank God for it. Hello? But my faith is not in that alone. Who's my faith in? Faith in God. What, what is faith? It's a belief. It's a conviction about something you've heard. It's a persuasion. It's what these men and women in the Bible that we just read about, they had. How do you get faith? You hear something from God. So Jesus said, have faith in God. I love what R.W. Schambach used to say. You don't have any problems. You just need faith in God. R.W. Schambach, who saw, who saw little people rise from the dead, deformed babies that came out of their mother's womb deformed, completely restored right in front of him. He saw miracles. He saw signs and wonders. And he said this, you don't have any problems. You just need faith in God. Somebody say faith in God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Just that simple. Amen. Do you need a theological, theological degree? Amen. Do you need a Sunday school, uh, perfect Sunday school attendance for 30 years? No, you just need a word. Amen? Glory to God. Somebody say this with me. Amen. Somebody say one word. One word. From, God From God can change my life forever. forever. Amen. Now I want to um, I want, I want end with this. Travis, go ahead and come on up. It says this. Uh, I, I was mentioned Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. Abraham, Abraham um, obviously had a word from God that he would become the father of many nations. Amen. And it's interesting to me, Abraham, uh, Abraham, the word, somebody needs to hear it. You know what? Bow your heads, everybody, this morning. Bow your heads. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. Abraham got a word from God that he would become the father of many nations. That was the word, one word from God. He'd become a, uh, he had a couple of words from the Lord, too. You know, that he would be, 
God would bless them abundantly. There ain't no poverty in God. You partner with God, the earth is yours. There's no limits on what God can do in and through you as far as the blessing is concerned. I, can't, I never understood why preachers and pastors talk about poverty like it's a good thing. Poverty is a curse. Poverty is a curse. God wants you abundantly prosperous. Everybody in this room, God wants you to prosper abundantly. Amen? So God told Abraham he was going to bless him, but his first promise was, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And that promise, that word that God gave Abraham had enough power in it. That word was alive. And Abraham, 100 years old, Sarah, his wife, 90 years old, who was barren, was never able in her entire life to bear a child. 90-year-old woman, past the age of where even childbearing is possible. And Abraham, the Bible says, was as good as dead. He could not produce a child. But the word that God gave was alive and powerful. So the word that God gave to Abraham actually contained the power to produce what it said it would produce what that he would have a child and he did have a child named him isaac which means laughter because it's pretty funny when a hundred year old woman a man and a 90 year old barren woman have a child it's pretty funny ha ha so they had the child and you know from that child the nation of israel was birthed and because of the faith of abraham jesus was actually able to come through that that nation of people so now we're all those that are born again are actually brought in to the covenant that God made with Abraham the faith of Abraham he's the father of our faith so now his his descendants are as numerous as the stars in the sky like like the word God gave them you're gonna have your descendants are gonna be as numerous as the stars in the sky as the sand on the shore too many to count. Abraham has spiritual descendants and Abraham has natural descendants. And God did all that through a hundred year old man and a 90 year old barren woman. One word from God can change, listen to me, not just your life, but can change and alter the direction of the entire world. One word. One word word God gave one man has changed the entire course of history of course it was God's plan but it was God's power that brought that word to pass and it was Abraham's faith which how hard should it be to believe a God as great as ours but yet we wrestle oh I don't know if I can trust him no God's word has the power to produce he just needs your faith and cooperation. Have faith in God. Somebody say it with me. I have faith in God. Now, I don't know what you need. I don't know what you need. Maybe you're in like some of these stories here. Maybe you have a sickness. Maybe you have a financial problem. Who knows? Maybe you just need the Lord to begin to operate in your life. Maybe you need the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is. But everything that God did... Every one of those stories and everything in the Word of God, God did by releasing a word. What you need is, you need a word from God. And we could just take 30 seconds here, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart while your heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Let, let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. I've been in services. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. He'll tell you right now. I believe there's somebody in here, maybe in this room, obviously, somebody watching online. Somebody watching at a later time, the recording. And right now in this moment, or has already, the Spirit of God will give you a word. Maybe there's some investment you need to get involved. Maybe there's some direction medically you need to take. One word from God. Or he can just release his power right now through the word that's already been preached. I've heard stories of people sitting in services that were just healed. Just sitting under the word and the Holy Spirit moving. Just healed of whatever it is. I've, we've seen when you lay hands on individuals, they've been healed. Why? We're stepping out on God's word. Lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Such a struggle, man. There's such a struggle. People, they, they want to believe, but they've just, they've not been able to make that connection with God. But that's why the Bible says, forget everything that's behind you. 
You're never going to have the power of God in your life if you're looking back. Forget all that's happened behind you and just press forward and have a new start and say, Lord, I need a word from you. Or take a word he's already given you. Stand on it. Stand on it until it comes to pass. Because we're going to get into next week. The Lord allows me to continue on in this. That he who promised is faithful. When you have a word from God, you can, you can take it to the bank. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say, I receive it. Amen. Do you receive from God this morning? Amen. You don't have any problems. You just need some faith. You need some faith in God. I didn't say knowledge. I didn't say teaching. I said faith. Faith is something that God's word ignites in you and I. Say it again. Say, I receive it. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want to give you an opportunity this morning. Maybe you say, Pastor Jaron, I'm, I'm, I'm visiting uh, today, or maybe you've been, been coming to church, but you'd say in your heart, Pastor Jaron, I'm not a believer. I'm not a Christian. I've never been born again. Listen, this is not about doing good, being good, performing. No, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it's by grace through faith. Amen? That we're saved. It's a gift from God. Jesus came, like I said earlier, was birthed through the nation of Israel, kept the Jewish law, and God made him to be our sin. He became the sinful man, the sin nature. And he was nailed to that cross, shed his blood, because the word of God says there is no uh, forgiveness of sins or remission of sins without the shedding of blood. The whole old covenant, the Jewish covenant, was all about blood sacrifice. And they did that to atone for their sins. But Jesus was the final sacrifice. He shed his blood as someone who was perfect and then was made our imperfections. And that's how he died. He died as you, not for you. God identified your sin nature with him. He was nailed to that cross. The Bible says he died. He was buried. And what happened? When the punishment for your sin was paid for, God raised him from the dead. That's it. That's called the good news. Now, the Bible says if we believe that in our heart, that, that God did all that through Jesus... All we have to do now is activate it by making a declaration or confession of faith, which is just, just simple. It just says, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe. I believe that God raised him from the dead. I, I believe that Jesus is Lord. What you're doing is you're, you're confessing and saying, I believe that he did this for me as me, and I received that into my life. Maybe you're here today and you said, I've never received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. It's not about coming down and making a big show in front of people. No, it's about just making that faith confession and allowing God to recreate your human spirit. The reason you do wrong or, uh, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're living uh, the way you are uh, primarily is because you have a sin nature. Jesus came to fix that. What happens? He came to recreate your human spirit, give you back the life of God. It's called being born again. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor Aaron, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, but I want to do that today. I'm going to lead you in a simple confession. Just a confession of faith. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor Aaron, I've, been, I've become a Christian, but I've kind of just, I lost my way. I just, I didn't know who I was. I've kind of slid back away from God, but I want to rededicate my life today. Well, you, we can do that as well. Amen. And, and anything, you maybe have both of those right now. You're good with God, but you've got some other issues. Whatever it is during this time, just believe that you receive it right now. Just ask the Lord for what it is that you need. And believe by faith. Just take hold of what God's already promised. Some of you know promises. Just lay hold on them right now in the name of Jesus. But if you're here today, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to lead you in this simple confession. Those that are here, if you're already saved, I want you to declare this with me and with those that uh, would uh, want to make Jesus Lord of their life. Amen. Or rededicate their life. Let's all declare this simple confession of faith today. Let's say this. Say, I believe that Jesus died. He died for me. He died as me. He became my sin nature. He was nailed to that cross. He shed his blood. He died. He was buried. And God raised him from the dead. And when he raised him, he raised me. So right now, I declare that Jesus is Lord. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. Amen. Now, if, if you've been a Christian before, you know, or you're a Christian, you're just not serving the Lord right now, just let's just release our faith right now. Maybe you've made some mistakes you're ashamed of, but God sees you in Christ. You, you condemn yourself and the devil condemns you. 
but it's just simple just restoration back to God First John 1 9 if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us cleanse us from all unrighteousness amen you're born again you've just maybe made some mistakes and you've allowed the devil and yourself to put shame and condemnation on you God loves you as much as he did before you were saved when you first got saved he loves you the same today let's just ask the Lord we just release those mistakes and just ask the Lord to forgive us you know if that's you just you do that in your own way today just say Lord forgive me now mean it from your heart if we confess our faults he's faithful and just to forgive us just say Lord forgive me I've done this I've done this this week Lord forgive me that was dumb I shouldn't have said that Lord forgive me that was out of love forgive me what am I doing I'm just I'm under that covenant and I'm reminding myself the Bible says he's faithful and just he's gonna forgive us every time a thousand if you prayed that a thousand times a thousand times he's still gonna forgive you why he's it's a covenant He's not forgiving you based on who you are. He's forgiving you based on what Jesus has already done. It has nothing to do with you or your works. Amen. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Come on, just, just release, your, release that guilt. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Well, we